Good morning, everyone. Uh, so I will present you the i5 magnet, which is uh, built on top of Field++. So i5 magnet is a platform for modeling and simulating uh, simulation, sorry, of i field magnets. So <coughs> I will uh, briefly present you the context because uh, one of my colleagues will give a talk on that topic tomorrow. So uh, I feel magnets are essential uh, ingredients for large research area. We can quote, for instance, the LHC in Geneva, where they have really big magnets. And these magnets serve to uh, control the beam line, but also serves for the experiments. And for instance, uh, in these big ones, so the magnets are here, by the way, they managed to discover the Higgs boson. Here you have another example, which is an <coughs> NMR magnet, which is designed to study uh, the um, f functions of brain, and is actually built in Paris at the Neurospin facilities. And here you have some more common magnets designed for NMR, and they are especially used for uh, chemistry or biochemistry. So <coughs> at the LNCMI, so LNCMI stands for Laboratoire National des Champs Magnétiques Intenses, is a user facility run by the CNRS, which is in Grenoble and in Toulouse. So here in the lab, we are designing high field magnets, mainly for solid state physics research. The, <coughs> the broad of research performed in our magnets is extending right now to uh, MHD, for instance, magnetohydrodynamics, for instance, studying uh, the origin of the uh, Earth magnetic field. And we are also developing some magnets for ion sources. So <coughs> the, this facility may be accessed through uh, calls, and uh, if you like, you can perform experiments in our lab. So here are the technology we are using to get that high field magnets. So these are not superconducting magnets, these are resistive magnets. Because we provide field which is beyond 25 Tesla, and 25 Tesla is right now the limit for existing superconductor. So some figure, these magnets are powered by a 24 megawatt installation. That means we have currents which go up to 30 kilo amps. So these magnets have to be cooled down by a uh, water, water flow. So the water is about uh, 30 meters per second within the cooling channels. And with that kind of magnets, we can reach 36 Tesla in a 44 millimeter bore. So basically, for all these projects of big magnets, users are looking for the highest possible magnetic field or for some what I call magnetic field quality, either in terms of homogeneity, if you think of NMR magnets, or some very specific profile, for instance, for ion sources or for the magnets which control the beam line in the LHC. So these big magnets represent some design challenges besides the technical ones. And by technical ones, I mean the problem in terms of materials, for instance. So we have to cope with nonlinear multiphysics we have also to account for uncertainties in terms of uh, physical properties of the materials, in terms of geometry and mechanical clearances, and also in terms of operational conditions. This is really need to, to achieve what the users want and to have 
some robust and efficient uh, design tools. So this is the typical workflow for developing magnets. So we start with some um, optimization on some simple geometry, making a lot of assumptions to be able to carry out this optimization. We end up with some basic design. From this design, we built a mechanical structure which represents our magnet. Then we turn again to numerical modeling to see if these magnets will uh, meet the requirements in terms of fields, in terms of constraints, thermal constraints, mechanical constraints, and so on. This magnet is validated through uh, uh, several uh, experimental uh, ex experiments. And then the magnet is set into operation. Of course, if something goes wrong, we have to loop through this again. So the idea of this i fi magnet project is to provide a range of uh, multi-physics models to start from very simple uh, models, axisymmetrical models, and to go to complete 3D models, including more and more physics. What we want is we want to have some efficient uh, models to be able to carry out these complete 3D, 3D models. So we need HPC in that context. And even more, we need some reduced order models to uh, be able to perform uh, uncertainty quantification, sensitivity analysis, to go towards robust design. OK, so the project is mainly uh, devoted to what I call solenoidal configuration, which is uh, basically represented in this uh, sample magnets here. So the idea is to provide some automated CAD and meshing facility for this kind of magnets, to provide numerical models ranging from AXI models to 3D, to be able to perform some sensitivity analysis and uncertainty quantification. So to do that, we realize on several uh, tools. So magnet tools, which are in-house uh, LNCMI software, which covers the first step, that is the, the optimization, which is based on analytical calculation. Then we use Salome and MeshGems to create the CAD and to mesh. As for the physics, we are building our models on top of field plus plus boxes, and we are using Paraview for the post-processing. So I will go into more detail. So here is uh, a plugin we have developed within Salome to perform the automatic uh, geometry generation and to carry out the meshing all automatically. So here you have a sample of a 14 helices insert, which provides something like 36 uh, Tesla. So as you can see here, this is a small example of a script that you can run to create automatically this geometry and mesh it. OK. As for the multiphysics modeling, it has many similarities to what has been presented before. So we have to solve, of course, the Maxwell equation, which will uh, give us the magnetic field. As there is uh, high, field, uh, high current flowing into the magnets, there are a lot of uh, joule losses. So we have to deal with the uh, heat equation. The magnet has been to to has been uh, well need to be cooled because of that joule losses. So we have also to uh, consider the cool and flow within the magnets. So, so far, this model is only done by uh, some uh, very 
shall I say, rough modeling, which, uh, which is uh, to consider uh, uh, convection uh, heat exchanges using standard correlation to have access to the heat exchange coefficients. And finally, due to the Lorentz forces and the dilatation, we have to consider the elasticity to get the maximum efforts within the structure. And of course, all of these are looped because first of the physical property, we which depends on the temperature, and they are looped also because of the deformation, which may act on the cooling, uh, which may degrade it actually the cooling, and then uh, change the dilatation and the property and so on in the loop. Okay. So here are some examples of the calculation. So here we have. Uh, an example of an insert which has been modeled with uh, something like uh, 30 millions of unknowns. So to perform the whole, the whole loop, we need a very huge uh, memory and uh, it uh, runs in something like one hour. Okay, here are an example of the freely magnetic field created by such kind of structure. And what is interesting to notice here is uh, that uh, for the first time it was observed that we have uh, some clear uh, 3D magnetic effects here. We can see here. This is a radial magnetic field at the output of the magnet along uh, a circumference. And uh, it was believed in the past by experts in that community that that kind of magnets have almost an axisymmetrical behavior, which is obviously not the case. And uh, we have performed experiments to see that effectively we have this same kind of behavior. Okay, so finally with the model we can also compare various levels of uh, of uh, well, different models with different hypotheses. Okay. So besides this, uh, these tools, as I said before, we want to go to for we, we are looking for robust designs. So we want to be able to identify what are the most influential uh, design parameters. We want to be able to carry out some parametric study to perform some uncertainty quantification. So to do that, we rely on the reduced basis field plus uh, plus framework and on the library for statistics, which is called open terms. Okay, here is an example. Uh, so we have uh, an helix which is part of a magnet. We are looking for the mean temperature within this magnet in operating condition. We consider uncertainty on the... Okay. Oh, here I am. So we consider uncertainties on the f physical property of the material here, and also uncertainties on the operating conditions, and especially on the water cooling uh, model. So here is the heat exchange coefficient, and here is the temperature of the water. So using <coughs> the reduced basis uh, methods, we can uh, perform a lot of calculation because we have mainly again about a factor 150 for a computation of such kind of model. Okay. So we have some interesting uh, information about the mean, mean temperature and the deviation from the standard. And uh, we can, we have in that case what are the main <coughs> Parameters. Well, obviously, it's a current, which is the main parameter. 
But what is interesting is that uh, the second more influence parameters are the ones from the, well, uh, actually the temperature from the water, and then only the heat exchange. And the parameters, well, connected to the material properties are al have almost no influence. So this kind of information is really interesting from a designer point of view because it says that we have to put more emphasis on trying to find a way to, lo well, to act on the water temperature instead of trying to improve our material properties. And finally, you have also, we have also access to uh, nice information which are quantiles. So quantiles is a way to, to tell that we are sure that uh, for this kind of magnet, the temperature will not exceed uh, 130 degrees at 99%. So this kind of information may be really interesting to, for the control command system because we have very tight uh, threshold for the security. Okay, so from a practical point of view, uh, the practical workflow for the user is the following. So we start giving some... Uh, okay. So, uh, Okay. Starting from some files, we perform the optimization. This optimization is used to generate some files to carry out the CID and the meshing generation almost automatically. Then the user has to fill some uh, configuration files to define what he wants to perform in terms of uh, calculation. Okay, only the thermoelectrical model or the all loops, for instance, and then we will use Paraview to have access to the results. So so far we have not customized Paraview to to get some uh, well images through uh, through some scripts or things like that. Okay. So in terms of installation, all the sources are stored on GitHub r right now. The software is built on top of uh, custom packages, also for Field++. Plus Plus. We use these packages to create a Docker image, and this Docker image may be readily used by users. In our lab, most of the designers are using uh, Windows and not uh, Linux system. So here you have a simple example showing you that uh, the CAD is running directly through Docker within uh, Windows 10. So what we, pl we want to go one step further, which is to be able to have a continuous deployment onto our computer using uh, some kind of uh, tool like uh, BuildKite. So so to sum up, uh, we have uh, somehow simplified all the process uh, of installation. We have simplified the use of uh, the whole chain through the use of uh, JSON file for the configuration. We have improved a lot the, the code by um, creating some uh, test suites. And there is actually a be, well, develop, we are actually developing the documentation which may be accessed by the users from that website. So it means that uh, in terms of deployment, we are almost ready at this point to have iFi Magnet to be used no longer by me, we develop it partly, but to be used by uh, people from the, uh, what we call in French, bureau d'études. I don't know in uh, the translation in English, sorry. So the designer, the guy who actually make CAD and so on. So they are ready, the code is ready to be used by them. So, okay, that's it. Thank you for your attention. And if you have, uh, can show you the website, what it look like. Uh, Okay, let's start with this. 
So it looks something like that. So we, you will find there all the information you need to be able to okay, create a geometry. It's not fully ready, but uh, so you have the commands here to start uh, Docker, the Docker image. And here are an example of the scripts to create that kind of geometry, which is rather complex. Okay, and here you will find the same example. 